Hi, I'm Charles, director and programmer on Short Fuse. In case you're new, Short Fuse is an upcoming roguelike all about defusing bombs that really shouldn't have made it past management. We've got desserts, footwear, and even everyday items all making explosive exits. As a QA tester, all you need to do is defuse each bomb by snipping the red wires. Let's start this update off by having Chad give us a look at our new bomb. Thanks, Charles. I'm Chad Van Patten part of the art team here on Short Fuse. We have been working hard to get colorblind accessibility into Short Fuse. Currently, we are supporting some types of red to green color deficiency and blue to yellow color deficiency. While not all cases are currently supported, we are working on them to be included in future updates. To access these accessibility settings, you can either from the main menu, click Escape, go to Accessibility, and pick from the drop-down menu listed, or while playing the game, you can do the same by clicking Escape, going to Accessibility, and choosing the different drop-down. As you can see, the wires and then the floppy disk later on in the game will change colors respectively to the colorblind settings. Next, we have Ken giving us a breakdown on the Fuse Mail sound effects. Thank you, Chad. I'm the sound designer for Short Fuse, Ken. Between each wave of bombs and short fuse, you'll get the opportunity to visit your computer, open your different apps, it's a workstation, it's also a way to check your stats, but today we're going to focus on the email app. The email app in short fuse contains a bunch of different emails from different characters you'll encounter throughout the game. These emails will tell you more about the company you're working at, tell you more about the purpose of your job, and it will also allow you to unlock more of the story and just more things to do in general, from mini games to play, to secret new app functions on your desktop, really cool stuff. The important part of the Fusemail app is the emails. Here's someone else to talk about why the emails are really, really important. Thanks, Ken. Of course, as an email system, FuseMail needs some emails, too. As the narrative designer from Short Fuse, it can be just as important to think about what emails we shouldn't send the players as it is to figure out which ones we should send. We want the player to be frequently checking their email, which includes a lot of junk mail and coworker chatter to evoke the experience of a superfluous office job, but we also don't want to inundate the player every time they finish a wave. A good email serves a purpose which we split up into a few groups. Story-critical emails need specialized triggers, which encourage the player to play in different ways and incentivize them to keep checking fuse mail if they want to progress. Chatter and spam, meanwhile, give insights into the world and characters of short fuse and provide a laugh or two to break up the tension of normal gameplay. This second kind of email will be randomly distributed after rounds, making sure the pacing of delivered emails is maintained. The JSON files we use to implement emails caters to these two kinds of emails. For junk mail, a function for random emails is soon to be implemented, while email triggers that allow for multiple logic-gated conditions offer fine control over story-critical emails. Another fun feature of our JSON files is the ability to lock emails from sending outside of certain locations, so emails only meant for, say, the game show won't randomly send while you're doing your normal day job. But how do you get to a different location in the first place? Here's Charles to talk about the key mechanism behind the transition. What a transition. Thanks, Jacob. In order to gain access to the game show, the player needs to complete special challenges delivered through Fusemail. Completion of these challenges rewards you with a corrupted floppy disk, which contains part of a special program designed to enable the change. For the floppy disk itself, it's very much designed to show the corruption through a glitch effect. Behind the scenes, this effect is enabled by a texture mask, which tells us which parts of the floppy disk are corrupted, a stencil shader to create a multi-dimensional effect, and a simple texture of alternating characters. And if you look closely, you'll see that Short Fuse is written in binary. But now that we have all four of these corrupted floppy disks, we can take a look at this mysterious program. The Master Navigation program is unlocked by gathering all of the corrupted floppy disks. This program is multifaceted, serving both as a method for switching to the game show and a way to directly modify the game. That is, as long as you have enough charge to pull it off. Charge is needed in order to use or activate any of these items, so it's an important resource to keep in mind. For the development process, first I started by creating a mock-up of the Master Navigation program. Unlike in our previous computer programs, I wanted to keep a minimal approach here, which means the mockup is pretty simple in comparison. For asset creation, there are three main techniques. 
First was the title. This was made in After Effects and exported into a sprite sheet. This technique was also used to create the green borders with the little pixels going around in circles. Then we have the interactables, which consists of the toggle, the dial, and the button. Each of these were modeled in Blender, exported at an incredibly low resolution, and then cleaned up a bit in a sprite. And finally for the battery charge, this was also modeled in Blender, except instead of going directly to the game, a few masks were created from this initial render in order to enable the battery shader. This shader is used to show how much charge you have and how much charge is about to be used. And of course all this was implemented in the same custom computer system which we showcased back in April. But with all of that, you could really say the computer just keeps getting bigger, huh? Anyways, Short Fuse isn't just a computer simulator, right Max? No, it's also a game show. That's not a good segue to what I'm talking about, but it sounds better than it's also a place to tweak numbers and curves very slightly until people are happier. Right now I'm talking about balancing and the procedural wave generation. It's tough. We have to meet a whole bunch of goals at the same time. Just for example, some of them are make the game easy enough for beginners at the beginning, while just as engaging for experienced players, make the waves very hard as they go on, but still possible to play for those who choose to, meet both of those conditions while also roughly maintaining a sort of pacing of overall difficulty, make sure that as many players as possible can play short fuse with whatever difficulty level is right for them, especially factoring in accessibility. Give the player an assortment of bombs that feels different every run, while still also being predictable enough to game plan around. And a bunch more, it really is a lot to juggle. We also have to consider the environment that players are going to be playing in. We actually made a different set of wave generation settings just for demo purposes, because we want people to be able to experience the ramp up in difficulty in one shorter play session. I could probably talk about this forever, but I'll stop today and I'll probably resume some other time, so let me know if you want that to be soon. See ya. Thank you so much for tuning in to Short Fuse's ninth devlog. Coming up soon we have some even wackier bums, a much needed tutorial, and a bunch of other things we just cannot wait to show. In the meantime, why not subscribe and wishlist on Steam? Alright, thanks again and see you next time.